Welcome to the Unenlightened Stepmom. I'm Mary G. And I'm going to share with you my immune boosting tips. Now, to be really honest, um, sometimes I feel like it's a lot what I do to support my immune system when I'm talking about it to someone, but also keep in mind that these are things that I've just put into play over many years. And now it's just consistent. Most of the things, I kind of have them divided by what I do all the time, no matter what. And then what I do if it's cold and flu season or if there's something go around, going around or if there's someone in my house has a virus or has a cold. Um, and so I'm going to do the best that I can to share with you. And I know a lot of you might already do these things. So thanks for listening. And I hope you feel like, yeah, rock on. Um, and if some of these things are new for you and you have questions, let me know in the comments below. You can also subscribe to this channel. And then if I make updates to these videos due to your questions or your comments, then you can be notified. And eventually, hopefully, we can do some live streams and we can have those Q and A's happening live. So the first thing that I'll say about boosting the immune system is that this kind of this idea of boost your immune system to me is really, it's like a daily thing that we have to do that taking care of our health and wellness, it's just, it's part of our life. It's a lifestyle thing. Meaning if you want to be healthy, make healthy choices, do things that support your body. And interestingly enough, to have a strong and healthy immune system, it's, it's anything that supports the systems of your body. So things that support your digestive system, things that support your respiratory system, things that uh, support your nervous system, especially because the nervous system really kind of controls the rest of them, um, things that support your endocrine system, all of these help your immune system function really well all the time. Um, so I don't want to turn it into like a jargon thing like boost your immune system. It's more like your immune system is has a job to do and that's to provide your body your being with immunity and that's its job and it does it really well when we treat the body well and when all the systems of the body are functioning well together as a yoga teacher and yoga practitioner this is a big part of our focus um, as practitioners is what harmonizes all the systems of the body so in the kind of the yogic way of thinking we there's like different layers and sheets and different ways of dividing up our being. We can do it through the chakras. We can do it with the koshas. We can do it with the physical body, with the systems of the body. Uh, all these different ways to kind of divide and categorize and all of them work well together. They're all integrated systems and they all rely on each layer, each system functioning optimally. So it, this doesn't mean how do I get my immune system to function well and disregard the others. It's everything has to function together. So talking about a healthy immune system is really talking about a healthy body, a healthy lifestyle in general. So bear with me because uh, this is an exciting topic to me. I love feeling good. Um, I love feeling really vital and healthy. And when I don't, I can, I can be pretty cranky because I just think it's the best. When I'm feeling really good, I, like even my heart feels really good. I feel really connected to God. I feel really connected to the beings around me. I feel really connected to nature. I feel really grateful. And when that uh, vitality slips away from me, it's more difficult for me to access those places of gratitude and connection to divinity and to my soul and things like that. So it's quite important to me to feel good and I love feeling good and it's a really exciting topic for me. Um, so what I'll say first is if you don't consider yourself having a healthy lifestyle, please just take these recommendations and start to use them slowly doing one thing at a time and be patient with yourself. If you already make a lot of healthy choices, maybe you'll pick up a new tip or two, I don't know. Um, so the number one thing that I'll say that's that's actually kind of a, a, a loaded statement is you need to be sleeping well. Your body needs to be resting well. Recovery is really important. And things that cause issues with sleep 
they just they're so wide ranging why people don't sleep well whether it's uh, more anxiety driven or whether it's, whether it's physiological the quality of rest that we're getting is depending on it's dependent on um, how much we've digested before we've gone to bed uh, what we ate before we went to bed how we're breathing when we go to bed all of these things affect your sleep so if you're eating heavy meals really close to dinner time, you're not gonna rest well, your body is not going to recover well, you need to have at least two hours after your dinner time. And your dinner time doesn't need to be your biggest meal of the day. Eat nourishing foods, but also eat simple foods, um, and you'll rest better. Avoid having sugar or activating substances such as chocolate. I love chocolate, I love chocolate in the evening. It doesn't mean that I never eat chocolate after lunch because I do all the time and I often pay the price. And I love Lily's chocolate, which is sugar-free. It's stevia sweetened, and we'll get to sugar in a moment. But even if it's like a sugar-free thing, the cacao and some nice chocolate still just, it can, it can make it more difficult for me to sleep. So if I'm already dealing with extra things going on in my life, perhaps I know that I'm prone to have anxiety. Maybe there's something, a lot of things going on in my life that I'm trying to balance. I, I know I have to be disciplined with not having those activating substances later in the day uh, so that I can actually rest well because they will affect your sleep. Now, I don't take caffeine at all, um, but certainly caffeine. If you're taking caffeine later in the day, it's going to affect the quality of your sleep. Even if you're using some type of medication to help you sleep to counter the caffeination, it, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna sleep as well. So if, whether you're taking a sleep aid or you're using alcohol or marijuana or something like that to help you sleep. Um, if you had caffeine, those substances that are helping you sleep are not still not gonna give you the restful sleep. It's not the type of rest that we're talking about where the, the systems of the body are able to recover and assimilate and prepare for the next day. We're really hard on our bodies. They're incredible, precious blessings, these bodies, how they function. Honestly, it's like, when I read through an anatomy book and for all my friends that are nurses or for all of you that are watching that are nurses or doctors, I know that you'll understand that the, the miracle that is the human body, it's just, oh, it's just mind blowing. The cardiovascular system alone, it just, it's just incredible. Go, go get an anatomy book from your local library, sit down with your kids, look through how your body moves oxygenated blood and unoxygenated blood throughout your body it's incredible it's like it's just amazing and I feel like when I see those things I don't know I don't know how you don't believe in a higher power it, the body is a miracle when you look at it it's it, it's majestic and it's beyond comprehension so it works really hard and it protects us from so many toxins and it assimilates what we need to assimilate and it gets rid and detoxifies the things that we don't need but for it to function really well and do all of these incredible things, then we have to treat it well. And the best way is resting well. Um, also, to go on to the substances that we're using to sleep, if you're having to use substances to sleep, I, I recommend that you start looking at your diet and the other things you're taking in through the day, your stress levels, and see if you can um, start to get off of substances that help you sleep. Because again, there it's like fake rest. It's like you're, you're being drugged into sleeping and your body is still not resting that well. Plus, now it's having to counteract the effects of whatever substance you used to sleep, um, which now, now that's more work for your liver, et cetera, et cetera. Alcohol. Alcohol does not lead to good rest. Yes, I've noticed that after alcohol, you fall asleep really, really hard. But if anyone is like me, the sugar and the alcohol will wake you up in the middle of the night. In yogic terms, we say during the vata time is when it wakes me up. The sugar from the alcohol will wake me up between 2 and 4 a.m. I'll feel really good, but I'll be like, oh, I really should sleep more. Um, and then I'll go back to sleep 3.30 or 4. And then when I do wake up at 6, I'm super groggy um, and I don't feel good and I'll have a headache. And this, you guys, is off of, off of like a drink or two. Um, I'm not gonna lie, there were times in my life where I drank a lot and I'm, I feel really fortunate. I had to make a lot of very drastic lifestyle changes to where that wasn't the case. 
and um, now it's very, very little, and who knows, maybe one day I'll have the courage to walk away from it altogether. Um, but as of now, you know, I occasionally, once a week, once every other week, sometimes once a month, will have a drink or two, and even just that will affect me that strongly, where it wakes me up in the middle of the night and I don't sleep well. So think about that. Think about the substances that you're putting in your body, food, substances, drinks that you're putting in your body after lunch, how it's affecting your sleep and that you guys sleep is just so important and if you're a new parent um, it's a phase and the other things you can do to support your immune system and balance the systems of your body will be super helpful but also all my new parents out there or parents just dealing with the scenario that you know even not we say new parents like they're the only ones that don't get any sleep but you guys sometimes we don't get any sleep and our daughter is eight and we only have one. So when you've got multiple kids in your house, you might just never sleep until they're gone. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, you do the best that you can. If you are dealing with a baby, take the, the advice to nap when your baby is napping. Productivity is so overrated in this world and sometimes it drives me crazy. We have overcomplicated our lives to ha like try and do so many things, be new parents, run our own businesses, and then it's like every spare second we're fighting for that quote-unquote productivity, and I'm over it. I'm like moving in the opposite direction right now. I could care less about my productivity. I want to do what I'm jazzed about, and if that means like I don't clean the house or I don't fold the laundry or I don't do something, like if you could see this whole room around me, there's like clutter there's taxes over here, my harmonium and some of my instrument stuff here, my yoga clothes are piled in there, the yoga clothes that I put on or take off the layers that I use, and then there's like yoga props, I know you can see the bolsters, but then there's my chair and my strap and my blocks, and you know, it's like, I don't care, like, I'll tidy it up, but I'm going to do what I'm jazzed about right now and just simplify my life and not overcomplicate it, and we do that so often, so... Um, if you're parenting and you're finding sleepless nights because your children are up at night, then I understand rest when you can and some of the other things we talk about will be helpful. Um, I will say if you're not resting well because your kids are coming into your room all the time, try co-sleeping, get them a bed in your room or if you have multiple kids, let them all sleep in the same room. It's helpful. Um, and then they're not waking you up all night. I'll do another video on family sleeping and I know everyone's not a huge fan But it's epic and sweet and amazing and it saved our lives during a period of time I thought we were never gonna sleep again And I'm so glad that that we shifted we've done it before and we shifted out. But anyways, that's another story um, so we'll we'll support you guys that aren't getting rest for valid reasons also if you're a parent and you're trying to be productive by putting your kids to bed early and then getting a ton of stuff done in the evening, that does not lead to restful sleep. I know, I know that's what you feel is your only option, but you would be better off going to bed when you want the kids to go to sleep, which is a whole nother thing that we do. We like force our kids to sleep because we need grown up time. One day your kids are gonna be gone. You're gonna have all the grown up time in the freaking world, you guys. Like, let it go. Stop being so rigid with the bedtimes. If everyone needs to rest, if you're tired, go to bed early. Everyone go to bed early. Get everyone in bed at 8 or 8.30, including yourself, and then you will wake up before your kids. Get yourself up at 4.30 or 5 and do those few little things. If you're on your computer and you're working until 10 o'clock at night, you're not going to rest well. You're not. There's all types of things, it, the stimulation of working alone, but also the light from your devices, etc. So get your sleep, get your work done at another time. Don't be hard on yourself if you don't get it done. I mean, I know it's easy for me to say, but trust me, like, I get it. I do. I've worked into the night and I don't do it anymore. It's just, I've just had to change my whole life, my lifestyle, the 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 elements of my job I had to make hard decisions and take financial cuts because I wanted my lifestyle to be simple and to support my health and vitality so I I get it they're hard decisions and um, I have faith that it all works out so get your rest my friends that's my number one is rest 
Number two, sugar. It's bad news for all the systems of your body. I'm so sorry to say. Sugar and most sugar substitutes. Um, stay away from them. Get them out of your kid's diet if you can. I know it's fun and it is fun. We give our kids sugar sometimes and it's fun. We make cookies, we bake, but it's, I'm serious. You got to just limit it. You got to limit the sugar. It is just, it should be a special occasion. Um, there's other ways to get your sweet tooth on. I know an Ayurvedic way is have a date. Dates, um, they do have natural sugars in them, but they're, they're very digestible and the nutrients within them are more nourishing and they're, it's more easily assimilated within your body. So dates are a great way to bake with them. Like Lara bars are made with dates. So even though if you look at the sugar content of a Lara bar, you might be like, well, it's the same as this other bar. But it's like it's from a date and that type of sugar is just going to be better assimilated. Um, for me, when I, when I know I need to step away from sugar in a major way, um, well, I won't even have dates, but if, if I'm doing something where I'm just trying to step away from my chocolate that I love, it's like one date is enough. And then I, my craving is gone for the chocolate. It, they're incredibly nourishing. You can use dates if you make your own plant-based milk. You can use dates to sweeten your plant-based milk. You can blend up dates with your plant-based milk to make your oatmeal. Um, all these different types of things, but stay away from sugar and most sugar substitutes. And I'm saying most sugar substitutes because I do like stevia. Um, I like to use a liquid stevia when we're sweetening our tea uh, or oatmeal or something like that. But um, like the fake sugar drinks, like when you buy juice for your kids and it says sugar free, those are just, you know, let me err on the side of being dramatic and say they're, it's just poison. For your children's body it's not good you know it's just not good and I know we the the juices the all fruit juices have sugar in their natural sugars okay so you know maybe on the weekends your kids get their fruit juices their little honest juice pouches and during the week hey they can drink water like everybody else or chamomile tea uh, you know it's like it's gonna be fine and you go slow. If you have a lot of those things, go slow. Take it out of your diet slowly. But I'm telling you, sugar is not good for any system of your body. And it will definitely deplete your immune system because the rest of the systems of your body are having to work so hard to assimilate to the sugar intake. And there's like sugar and high fructose corn syrup in everything. So read your labels. Stay away from it as much as you can. Just stay away from it. Those are my two really, really big things. Those are all the time. Those are lifestyle things, not just when there's a coronavirus, COVID-19, COVID not when it's just flu season. That's like all the time I try to do those things. Rest really well and stay away from sugar. Definitely though, when there's things going on, when it's flu season, you got to do those things. If it's flu season, don't drink alcohol at all. Just stay away from it and keep yourself healthy. Okay, so now I'm going to go into like the things that I use, the products that I use on a regular basis to stabilize the systems of my body and keep me healthy. I work with a lot of people. I'm a yoga educator. I work in small groups. I work in large groups. I travel a lot. I travel to big cities. I travel to small cities. And I interact with people closely, um, meaning that I oftentimes have my hands on their physical body. I'm touching their heads. I'm touching their feet. I'm touching their props, their yoga props. Um, I'm around children a lot. We homeschool our daughter. We have kids in the neighborhood. Uh, and I'm also, I also work with our seniors. I work at an assisted living home for Alzheimer's. And so I have to think about what I'm bringing to all of these people. So not only my own immune system, but what could possibly be carried on me all the time. Um, so these are things that I do all the time to protect myself and to keep my body healthy and vital. Number one, washing hands. I wash my hands a lot. If you're a yoga instructor, wash your hands before and after every single class that you teach. That was one of the first things that I learned in my teacher training in New Orleans at Swan River Yoga and in the Jiva Mukti teacher training. I remember in the Jiva Mukti yoga teacher training, 
Um, one of the facilitators that time, Jules Febre, told us about how changing our clothes, like especially because he lived in New York City, uh, the clothes that he wore traveling from his home to the studio, he changed them before he taught yoga and I thought that was so cool and I still use that today. Um, where if, especially I go to New York quite often for my trainings in Iyengar and uh, I will, like, I don't wear the same clothes that I'm gonna practice in while I'm around with the exhaust fumes and the people on the subway and sitting on the subway seats and etc. I'm a little looser with that here in Wilmington because I just go from my car to whatever and back. Um, but still sometimes I will do it, especially if it's like an all day thing, I'll wear one set of clothes. Um, or if I'm in a teacher training and I know I'm lecturing, my lecture clothes will be different than the practice clothes where I'll actually be getting close to people and interacting with them. And then after that class, I take those clothes off so that I don't have the clothes that got other people's sweat and germs and possibly my sweat on them. I take them off and I put on my clothes for lecture, etc. So in addition to just washing the hands, I think about the clothes that I'm wearing and what's on them. So if, if you're working around people, it's like think about nurses and stuff. They wear their scrubs and then when they go home, hopefully, they take them off. So if you're a yoga teacher or you're a school teacher, when you get home, take those clothes off. Like if you're around groups of people, take the clothes off that you've been wearing all day and put something fresh on. Uh, so just basic cleanliness is important to observe for yourself and the people that you're around. Okay, my two favorite products that I use all the time, dun, 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 Wish Garden Herbs Kick-Ass Immune. I love all of Wish Garden Herbs products. Wish Garden Herbs, if you ever see this, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for your beautiful products. They have Kick-Ass Immune, Kick-Ass Allergy. They have one called Get Over It which is when you're at the tail end of something that likes to linger. They have one called Serious Cough. They've got a whole set of things for traveling, which consists of things that help with jet lag, um, that help with, uh, which has like ginkgo, it gives you energy, and then things that help you sleep called Serious Relaxer and the Kick-Ass Immune. They have uh, sinus stuff, Kick-Ass Sinus. All their products are amazing. I use this on a regular basis, maybe not daily, but just every now and then, um, I put a few squirts in my mouth. And for this, you know, if you're not actually s sick and your immune system's not currently compromised, it doesn't take a lot. Um, it doesn't take a lot to use. Now, it does say to not take while pregnant or nursing. These are highly concentrated herbs. If you know anything about pregnancy, um, high concentrations of herbs can be too powerful during a pregnancy, uh, almost detoxifying in a way. And so you don't, you don't want to be taking them while you're pregnant. So consult with your, uh, a local Ayurvedic physician or your doctor or your midwife on the best way to support your immune system while you're pregnant. But some of the other things will be helpful. Not this, not this, but this is so awesome. And then if the immune system is compromised, then you take it up six pumps every one to three hours. And we even give this to our daughter. It doesn't taste good. If you've never had an herbal tonic, it's not the most pleasant thing in the world, but you do get used to it. And now our daughter takes it just, we don't have to put it in anything. We used to mix it in kombucha and give it to her because she didn't like the taste. But now she just lets us put a squirt underneath her tongue and it works out great. This, this is my number one recommendation kick-ass immune. I love it so much. My next one, this is our magic tonic for everything, colloidal silver. <laughs> we use colloidal silver for everything. I mentioned in one of my other videos that this is what we, we have the droppers too, and we put the droppers in our daughter's eye when she got stabbed in the eye by our cat. Um, we use this for all of our animals, five cats. Um, this is what we'll put it in their water or on their food. Uh, if they're sick, if, they, if they're coughing or something, and if they're injured, we put it on their food and we put it on their actual wounds if they have a wound. And we, that's, I'm serious, like we haven't taken them to the vet in over two years, knock on wood, and this is what we give them is, is this. Now obviously for your children and for your animals, it's, this is highly concentrated. You don't need to give them a lot. For myself, I give myself one to two sprays a day. 
almost all the time. If I'm traveling, I do travel a lot to teach and to train. These go with me everywhere. And I definitely use these when I'm traveling. Always, always, always. I never don't use these when I'm traveling. I also use them when I'm premenstrual um, because I do notice that my immune system does drop in the days right before I start my menstruation. That part of my cycle, I just feel it. I need more rest and I feel compromised with my immune system. I do the other things as well, meaning at, during that time, even though you want all the sweets, I stay away from sugar, I don't drink alcohol, and I rest really well when I'm premenstrual and I also amp these up as well. So these two things are my favorite, Wish Garden Herbs, Kick-Ass Immune, and Colloidal Silver. I think these should be in every home. Use them, you will love them, they're awesome. Um, some other of my regular products are the doTERRA On Guard products. So these are the beadlets, and they come out in little tiny beads. I know the light in here is funny, and this is the actual oil blend. So I, I use my beadlets daily. Um, I just take a bead or two before I teach yoga every day just because. I also definitely, when I'm traveling, the oil um, I will actually only use if it, I feel like suddenly a lot of people around me are sick. Um, I'll put it on my feet before bed. I'll put it on my feet before teaching or in the morning before I teach. Um, and if I feel I need to do more than that, then I'll diffuse it. But the oil I, I don't quite use as much to be honest. I definitely take it with me everywhere I travel. <laughs> um, serious. So like these things in my little like, you know, the kit, the little liquids that you can take. Now, I don't really do makeup and other things. And so this, and I don't really wash my face with soap. And I don't, if I'm not, if I'm traveling, I usually don't take even shampoo with me. So my liquids bag is simple. It's like on guard and these two things and it's like some concealer and, and toothpaste, right? But these are travel essentials to keep you healthy. I also like the peppermint beadlets and peppermint's good for everything. It's also good for your digestive system and it can be good for calming nerves, etc. So don't forget about the peppermint beadlets because we're talking about balancing the body. My other favorite uh, doTERRA oil that I use for health is Breathe. Breathe is a respiratory blend and I really love it for myself in particular. I think the oils that are in it uh, complement my constitution very well and this this oil I use to like keep myself in balance. So it's got laurel leaf, eucalyptus, which is excellent for respiratory things, peppermint, which I just mentioned, melaleuca, which is tea tree oil, antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. Same with the colloidal silver. Silver, It's antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, all those things. Uh, lemon peel oil, good, another antibacterial. Cardamom oil. Cardamom is such a lovely oil. It's one of my favorite oils. It's really good for lung health, but for me also, it's a very calming oil. It's one of my favorites, and I, I have a cardamom oil as well, doTERRA cardamom that I'll just use, but it's, it's in this one, which is really nice. And then two other oils that I don't know what they are, but the Breathe Respiratory Blend um, I use to help with respiratory health. It means that either, you guys, even just opening it and inhaling, you're bringing those oils that have the antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial qualities right all the way through the respiratory tract. You can call it hoo-hoo if you want, but it's so nice. It smells really good and it's good for you. And also it's calming and relaxing. So why not? So you can just smell it. Uh, Breathe is one of my favorite to put on. Now I don't put these on. My yoga teacher's out there. I don't wear these before I teach. Um, unless it's like right now. <laughs> In the days before the yoga studios close with coronavirus, yeah. I kind of walked in there with the hazmat suit made of, of essential oils. Like you couldn't see the suit, but I was like greased up with protective oils. And you know, so I'm sorry if anyone was offended by this fragrances, but normally no, I would not wear an essential oil on my body. I take the beadlets and maybe I put some on my feet, but I won't wear them on my body because some people really are sensitive to these oils. I don't know why. 
but I just am trying to honor that sensitivity. It's the polite thing, yoga teachers, to not wear essential oils, perfumes of any type before teaching. Um, there's essential oils in my body oil that I put on in the morning because I make one, which we'll get to, um, is for immune boosting, and that has some essential oils, but it, the, the fragrance doesn't necessarily like stay on in a strong way. Okay, next part of my literal daily routine all the time, gut shot. This stuff is so good. I just discovered it and I love it. Before this, I was just eating um, sauerkraut and drinking some of the liquid out of that or taking probiotics, but I love this farmhouse culture gut shot. And this one, I haven't tried the other one. I think they have like a beet ginger something, beet ginger one, and I haven't tried it. This golden turmeric, you guys, this is epic. Your gut is super important to your health in all the areas. A few years ago, I had an incredible case of adult acne and uh, gut health was the way that I got my skin back to homeostasis, back to equilibrium, was taking care of my gut and I had never thought about it before and now it's like our thing. And Eddie G has been doing a lot of research and listening to fun YouTube videos uh, on fermented foods and how good they are for your health and your immune system. You guys, your digestive system is responsible for how you assimilate a lot of what you put in your body. So to boost, quote unquote, your immune system and to be healthy, your digestive system needs to be functioning really well. So probiotics are awesome. Gut Shot is my favorite. Eddie loves miso. He just eats miso paste. He like spreads miso paste on his um, sandwiches. He puts it in all of our soups and anything. The other interesting thing he heard about miso, I haven't done the research myself, but when you ferment soy products, it takes out that whole weird estrogen thing that people are afraid of. I'm not afraid of that. So, I mean, uh, it, you know, I don't know. <laughs> That's like, there's like a thing where people like don't want to be plant-based because then they're going to have too much estrogen. I mean, it's like, you guys, what do you think that they're feeding the, the cows that get turned into beef and milk for you? Soybeans. So it's coming through in some way. They're eating soybeans, which is not what their diet should be. Their diet should be grass, but they're being pumped full of estrogen and then been given to you so that you don't you have that milk so that you don't have the soy milk, but yet that female cow was pumped full of estrogen for a whole very short life. Anyways, um, so yes, I haven't, as I said, I haven't done the research, but apparently the fermenting of soy products takes out the increased estrogen. I don't know, so I guess like tempeh and miso are really good products and so Eddie's been, that's been Eddie's kick. I've been on this gut shot. I love it. Okay, next part of the daily routine, Tulsi tea. So of course there's like a, my, I got this from one of my local co-ops and it was on sale. So it's right over the front of it. Um, but it's a Tulsi ginger tea. Tulsi is holy basil and Ayurveda Tulsi tea is really important. It's the only tea that I'm drinking these days since um, the beginning of 2020, I went completely off all caffeine. I haven't had a chai tea this year. And I love chai tea, but it's good. It's better for me. Um, caffeine does not agree with me so much. So Tulsi tea is excellent and it, it boosts the immune system as well as alleviates stress. So I have a Tulsi and ginger tea. I use this all the time and I take packets with me when I'm traveling. I just led a retreat in Tulum last month and I brought a whole bunch of Tulsi tea with me. And so if I'm traveling, I just take a couple of tea bags and I bring them with me so that I can have it. I mean, it's very helpful. My ladies out there, this is my favorite Tulsi tea by Numi Organic Tea. This is called their gratitude tea. It's a Tulsi tea. It says sweet licorice, ashwagandha, and turmeric, but no, you guys, there's so much more than that. It's got Tulsi, lemon verbena, licorice, turmeric, chamomile, rose, nettle, ashwagandha, echinacea, maca, clove, and damiana, which I don't even know what it is. It's organic. The What's in here is so good for women's health, so good for balancing our endocrine system as well as the immune system. And 
I think, man, this tea is like, this is next level. It's all, it's more expensive. I mean, at my food co-op, this tea is like six dollars or something. But I don't go to the doctor, even though I have to pay for health insurance and health care, which I don't need. Um, but I pay for it. And then last year, I had to pay extra t on my taxes because they said I made too much money. You guys, I don't make too much money. <laughs> like, that is not an issue. But I had to pay $700 extra dollars at tax time. And I'm over here thinking, I haven't been to the doctor in like six or seven years. Charging me all that money. Anyways, okay. There we go. So I hope that money goes to pay for someone's health care because it didn't pay for mine. This is where, this is how I pay for health care. <laughs> okay, the things that I do in special circumstances is I up my use of tea tree oil. Here's a doTERRA tea tree oil. I know, it's like dirty. They've changed it to say tea tree on it. It used to say melaleuca. It says melaleuca underneath. So um, again, antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. So when it's a flu cold season, I start to put this on my feet at night. I will diffuse it. If someone in our house has a virus, a respiratory infection, a sinus infection, or it's going around like it is right now in the world, I have literally been diffusing tea tree oil every day in my home, upstairs and downstairs. So it's, um, Downstairs, I've been diffusing it with a little bit of ginger, the doTERRA ginger essential oil, and upstairs, I've been doing it with Breathe. And they smell really nice together. Breathe is really calming for sleepy time. But then you're breathing, especially in your bedroom, you're breathing that in all night and in within your respiratory system. You're getting it um, all through the antiviral properties. I will say with these doTERRA oils, I have a... Um, diffusers that I didn't get through doTERRA and I have diffusers that I did get through doTERRA and I'm not trying to be like a doTERRA spokesperson salesperson but the doTERRA ones work way better than the ones that aren't it's like you have to put way less in there and it dis disperses it better it doesn't have an overwhelmingly strong scent but it like it permeates in a different way I, I can't explain it but also I don't have to use as many oils and you don't put as much water in there, but it lasts longer. I don't know the science behind diffusers. I'm not an expert, um, okay? So, but I do love doTERRA. If you're interested in doTERRA and you're not already in the in, comment below and um, we'll message each other and see if we can get you on that. The other thing that I don't do all the time um, is triphala. Now triphala, is a supplement or an herbal supplement that is very Ayurvedic in nature. I use this again before I start menstruating because it helps with me assimilating in those days before. Like I said, I feel my immune system goes down, my digestive system gets a little sluggish, I'm sluggish, and this really helps during that time. I also use it while traveling um, for the same reasons. My immune system feels compromised. I feel sluggish. My digestive system definitely gets a little out of whack when I'm traveling at all. And so this is really helpful. And then since the this particular virus, when it's a cold and flu season, I also take it. I'm taking it twice a day, two in the morning, two at night right now, um, which I don't always do. If I'm cleansing, I use it and I'll just take two at night. Um, and but I've been doing it every day and this is highly recommended so get your triphala on this is organic India which I think I got at one of our co-ops or at Whole Foods you can also get it through Banyan Botanicals which takes me to my next thing a Bianga um, if you've never heard of a Bianga it's Ayurvedic self massage and it's really important for um, our health and vitality and I try to do this daily. That is a part of my daily activity, but recently I've amped it up because I was reminded and I hadn't been doing it daily, but everyone's been sick. And so I've been doing it every day. I buy my uh, Abyanga oil. So traditionally it's sesame oil. You can use other oils, but I think that the oils that Banyan Botanicals sell are the best. I love them and I get the Pitta pacifying. If you don't know anything about Ayurveda, um, maybe I'll do a video on it, but you can also just look on the website. 
basically it says that um, all, all of us things within nature are made up of three different qualities that represent certain aspects and qualities of nature and they're Pitta, Vata and Kapha and those we all of us have those what they're called doshas or constitutions within us in some combination so you have to find your combination and then you need to do the things that keep that combination in balance because we'll have tendencies to get out of balance in one area or the other and sometimes even our non tendencies we can get out of balance and so we find what our combination is and then we keep that we try to keep that in harmony I'm a pitta vata and so I get the pitta oil and I like it the best um, I say that I haven't tried the other ones uh, but I do like it I have tried doing coconut oil and I I don't like that as much because um, and they don't recommend that for everyone but because I'm pitta and maybe in the summertime but I actually don't love that and so I stick with the Banyan Botanicals Pitta Pacifying Abhyanga Oil. I can put a link to that below. I'll also put a link to their dosha test. And if you're like, what is she talking about? Um, I'll, maybe one day I'll do a video on it, but you can Google it and you can find or find the information that's out there. But I'll put a link to the dosha test. So it'll tell you what your predominating dosha is and you can get your uh, Abhyanga oil based on that. But it's basically self-massage. You like cover yourself and they have videos on how to do it and you put the oil all over your body and it's amazing and it's relaxing. It also moves lymph through your body. So it's really good for, bo for boosting, there's that word again, your immune system, keeping you healthy. <laughs> So I recommend doing that on a daily basis, but definitely during these seasons when these things are going on. And I think, my gosh, I think I've covered everything that I wanted to talk about and that's taken enough time. As I said, thank you for bearing with me. It's like a lot of information. It's a total lifestyle. And if it feels overwhelming, um, just I promise, like this is just my life. It's not like every day I'm like, you know, I have a to-do list of things to do for my health. It's just literally it's my lifestyle and um, it, there are things that are so easy to just get into your lifestyle on a regular basis and you'll really enjoy it. But number one, sleep and less sugar or no sugar. Get that happening in your life as soon as possible. Um, comment below if you have questions about any of the things that I've said or if you have comments and additions. Again, subscribe to the video, the channel the Unenlightened Stepmom, and that way you can be notified when future videos come up, and if we start to do the live Q&As, we can participate together and get those questions happening. I hope that you've enjoyed this information. Good luck on your journey to health. If you're already healthy and, healthy and thriving, good for you. If you're not healthy and thriving, it's totally fine. Still good for you. I hope that you get there one day. Um, and, and find a, a sense of at least feeling vital, whatever your physical realities are. And so I look forward to the next time. We're virtually together on this thing we call YouTube. And until then, have a good day. Talk to you soon. Bye.